Now the dollar price of gold and silver doesn't mean anything. So for the viewers, it's how much stuff does it purchase you? So I want to shift gears and uh, let's go to the disconnect between the global economy and precious metals. Because <laughs> this is where things just totally get insane and we're, every day we wake up in the twilight zone and we shake our heads and we're going, how could this be? The stock market's up, the dollar is up and precious metals might be down or something or sideways and the stock market was in a bubble before the pandemic. And now, you know, I've got a chart that I'm going to be making a video on sometime soon of the Buffett indicator. And the Buffett indicator is the value of the stock market compared to the value of the economy, the GDP. And it has no business being with, with the stock market being larger than the economy. They're in balance at about uh, somewhere between like 45 and 60% or so. Uh, of the when the stock market is 45 to 60 percent the size of the economy but the overvaluation uh, it was at like 106 before uh, the Atlanta Fed came out and said that they expected GDP to fall by 52 percent for the second quarter mm -hmm. and uh, that would give us a Buffett indicator of 200 the stock market being 287 times <laughs> the size of the economy, which is just totally insane. So uh, give us your impression of the Twilight Zone economy. Dave, you first. Okay. Uh, I, I, I'm speechless, Mike, and you know how much I can talk. I mean, it's just, uh, <laughs> it's like living in the Twilight Zone. I mean, I can't fathom it. I mean, I'm too logical, too much of a critical thinker, knowing that the stock market's overvalued by any metric. I mean, Hertz is bankrupt and people are buying the stock. I mean, this is absolute, total, complete <laughs> insanity. It's the biggest top I've ever seen in my life as far as uh, the popular delusions and madness of crowds. I mean, yeah. this, that book. I mean, this is it uh, on steroids, if I can borrow that phrase, because nothing makes sense in the stock market right now. Nothing makes sense with the GDP uh, ratio to the stock market. It's so overvalued, and there's going to be a lot of people, I think, that get hurt. And it's people that are on the periphery and don't even know they're involved in the stock market. Pension funds, employee benefit plans, life insurance policies. There's a lot that are interacted and connected to the stock market that the average layman may not even know that they have exposure, uh, thinking that they may not, but they actually do. So it's the distortions and the malinvestment and the management of the interest rates that the banks have done for so long has contorted the market to a place that I'll call beyond belief. It's hard for me yeah. to fathom that we are where we are, but there we are. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, everybody was calling it the everything bubble. And I realized it's not the everything bubble. It's the almost everything bubble. If it was the everything bubble, there would be no opportunity in precious metals. Right. <laughs> Gold and silver to me is the only place to be. Jeff, your thoughts on the Twilight Zone economy? Well, Mike, you did a video, uh, I don't know, a month or so ago, talking about how stocks could melt up as much as they could melt down. And that's partly because of what the Fed is doing, uh, you know, investors thinking things are all better yeah. now, rushing in to buy things that are moving up. Uh, so I guess I'm not that surprised. Uh, that stocks are moving up, especially in the backdrop of where the Fed is just printing money, buying everything in sight, stop gapping everyone and everything, uh, rates near zero. We have that kind of environment. You have a mainstream investor who's not really aware of or in tune with what gold and silver can do for a portfolio. I, I see why they're buying that. But I agree with David. At some point, a lot of these people are going to get hurt because they think they'll just get out when it tops and hardly anyone ever does that. And they'll be rushing into gold and silver, but it'll be after gold and silver have already moved up a lot or supply is on afortium and on obtainium, like you've pointed out. So uh, I fear for a lot of people getting hurt. Uh, that's the biggest thing, but that is going to be part of the wealth transfer, the wealth shift. Uh, people moving 
out of the stock market and the bond market to a large extent when the dollar starts to suffer mm -hmm. and in the precious metals. And that's going to be, a, uh, frankly, a heyday for us, in my opinion. Yeah. So uh, lastly, I think, uh, I, I think we should close this now and just get an uh, impression on, um, you know, where you guys think that this might go. Because, uh, you know, I think you both know my opinion. I, th I think that uh, this is the end of a debt super cycle. I think the Keynesians have trapped themselves. Uh, and the only way out is just to continue down. They can't like reverse course. They have to continue down the road that they've chosen in, until its ultimate conclusion. And, and like Ludwig von Mises said, you know, if, if it's a, a boom brought about by uh, credit expansion, that it uh, is either an ab abandonment of, this, of the uh, credit expansion or a total collapse of the currency involved. And I believe that, uh, the, you know, the more I look at this, uh, the more I think that we, we've just had an, an enormous collapse in GDP and it's probably going to be, you know, by the end of the year when you average all the quarters out, it won't be this 53% decline, but it's probably going to be over 20 and that's going to be, in that short period of time, that's greater than anything going into the Great Depression. And you don't just bounce right out of something like that when a whole bunch of people right. lose their jobs and everything else. And then we have these Keynesian central bankers committed to trying to fool everybody that the economy is doing well by lifting the stock market. And to do that, they steal wealth from everybody by diluting the currency supply and they buy financial assets. And right now, they're only allowed to buy uh, government-backed financial assets. So it's, it's uh, bonds. And, uh, but now they've opened up these uh, different ways of actually, you know, through BlackRock and stuff, they're, they're, they'll be able to buy stocks and they're able to buy corporate bonds now and they're buying junk. And uh, I just do not see a happy ending for this. I see the potential personally. Now the dollar price of gold and silver doesn't mean anything. So for the viewers, it's how much stuff does it purchase you? I don't know what the Dow gold ratio is right now, but it's probably up at something like uh, between 13 and, and 16 or something like that. And just take that and double it. So this, these are some huge numbers, being able to buy 26 times more shares of stock. Uh, but I see gold prices that range from like 10 grand an ounce to up to uh, uh, infinity <laughs> with a total failure of the dollar. And then uh, the gold-silver ratio is right at around, a, you know, it's just under 100 right now. And so that means uh, if, if the gold-silver ratio in the final panic, the final end, when people go, oh, gold is too expensive, and they start rushing towards silver, there's a good possibility that that could go down to 20 or even 10. If it goes down to 10, your performance on silver is 10 times infinity. <laughs> because gold will have outperformed. If, if the dollar goes to zero, gold outperformed the dollar by infinity. Now, I don't think the dollar will actually go to zero. The dollar would, they would stop it at some point by going to a gold-backed dollar or something that people trust and not a debt-backed dollar, which is what we have right now. What do you guys see as the future for this? Well, first of all, I concur with, the, I think, everything you said. I mean, it looks like we're heading for an inflationary depression. And as you pointed out, Mike, I mean, even though the, I think food's going to be the number one factor for everyone on the, on the planet, but particularly Americans, because that's one area they really pay attention is how much does it cost to fill my tank and how much do I spend at the grocery store? And this is not just inflationary because of the money printing. It's really because of the breakdown in the food supply and what's been going on, if you've paid attention, and I know you two have. So people are going to have less income because of job losses, businesses not reopening, and that type of thing. And yet their food costs continue to go higher and higher. They'll equate that with inflation. So they'll start looking around to what are inflation hedges. So I think that'll spill over into the metals market at some point. The other part is global contraction. We are in a lifestyle change on a global basis. We are going to see lower lifestyles across the board. 
and it's not a function of money. I mean, it's a function of availability. I make the joke, but you could have a Krugerrand and be willing to buy, you know, uh, a prime rib dinner, but if there is no prime rib available in your county, it doesn't matter how much gold you've got, you're not going to be able to get it. I know it's a corny example, but I want people to think outside the box. So unfortunately, I don't want to be Dora Doomer, but the reality is a big contraction, a shift in uh, the way we do business. I think a lot of it will be more local. I think you aren't going to get grapes in the middle of the winter from South America, no matter what. And there's going to be you know, the overused word reset. You're going to have to reset the distribution cycle. You're going to have to reset the communications interfaces between the electrical grid and what uh, the power uses are and all kinds of things that people haven't really thought of. You're going to see a lot of robotics. It's very easy for a CV-19 robot to not have to distance because it's all machines in the factory and there's only one mass person that comes in and takes the supply chain from the one robotic arm that puts it on the 18-wheeler. I mean, there's a lot of changes in the future. And unfortunately, from my study view, Mike <clears throat> and Jeff, we're going to be in a situation where a lot of people are going to dream about the good old days when Ooh. things were, let's say, better for most people than they will be. Yeah. I, I agree. I, I, I think we've seen like the pinnacle of people's life, you know, in general, the pinnacle of our lifestyle. Uh, for uh, it all depends on how socialist we go. Uh, the more socialist we go, the longer a recovery will drag out. It could drag us down to where we never have a recovery and we never see uh, days like we have seen as far as uh, the ability for people to go out to restaurants and take vacations and cruises and things like that. I think life is, um, you know, people are waiting for things to get back to normal. Well, there's going to be a new normal. <laughs> Jeff, your thoughts. Where's gold and silver going? Uh, what, what's the future of the economy? Right. I, I, I mean, the Fed has showed us their playbook, right? It, it's yeah. rates near zero, print money, buy currency, assets. Print currency. Print you can't currency. print money. You can only mint money, and it requires a lot of digging <laughs> first before you can mint it. <laughs> yeah, right. That's exactly right. They can right. print currency. They can't print money. Only they gold and silver are money. Print currency, zero rates, buying everything, backstopping everything. We know their playbook. All of these actions are supportive for higher gold and silver prices. All it takes is one more little catalyst, and these things will, you know, gold and silver are going to be off to the races and, and probably including the mining stocks as well. Uh, you know, how high they go, I'll just take what the market tells me, what the market gives. But the point of that is that it's what it can buy you. Like you've always said, Mike, and as David pointed out, it's what gold and silver can buy you. That's really the right. essence of it. And that's why I have this new tagline of mine is, you know, your portfolio needs gold, but your lifestyle needs physical gold. And I think it's important that we all own physical gold not just because we sell it, Mike, but be, you know, we were all buying physical gold before that company started. Oh, yeah. It, it's because you're going to need it. And, and the odds of needing it, at least, are very high. And we've already seen separation between GDX and GDXJ. Uh, those uh, mining funds, and David knows this, they dropped uh, very hard in February and March, but there were days where they, those funds fell harder and deeper than the underlying assets in those funds did. There was separation. And I could see the same thing happening with a bullion fund at some point, you know, maybe some institutional investor wanting to take delivery or something like that. And there's separation between the price of the fund and the spot price of gold. So there's a risk you don't need to have. So I, I really do believe it's important to own physical going forward. Yeah. Um, you know, the answer to the question is they're going higher. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you said uh, uh, the separation between the assets in a bullion fund, which is supposed to be like GLD, SLB, you're supposed to be buying shares in physical gold and silver. But when you divide them uh, by each other, uh, day after day, there's this like, pat you know, you're trying to get an average of what their trend is but they go uh, above net assets and below net assets. And that means that they've got futures and options in there. They, it can't be gold and silver 
unless that when you divide the price of GLD, it should be its management fees coming out of the price of gold. So it should be this slow downward tilting line and that's it. It shouldn't be this uh, jagged up and down th thing that sort of averages out over time. And then the fact that you can short uh, all of these uh, funds means that they've got more ounces sold than ounces in the fund because they're borrowing ounces, uh, you know, shares from you without your knowledge, basically, lending them to somebody that's going to sell them short. They have to be returned one day, so they know they're going to be able to replace them to all of the people that do own them. But during the period of time where those are sold short, somebody else bought those same ounces that you own. <laughs> and so I just don't like the idea of all of this hanky-panky. Uh, I stay away from it. But, um, you know, I think we're coming to a, a point in time uh, where people really do need to protect themselves. Uh, I protect myself. I don't want to buy gold, right? I, I want to buy gold, but I force myself to buy silver. However, I've got a, a tube of gold eagles and I've only got uh, 12 in it. So I've got to buy like eight ounces of gold just to finish off that <laughs> tube because I don't like seeing an empty, uh, a half empty tube. Uh, so I am going to buy some gold sometime or another. I've been waiting for a pullback. But basically, uh, I just stick with silver because I really do think uh, you have the p uh, potential of getting five to 10 times the performance of gold, which could mean five to 10 times the performance of infinity. <laughs> well, it's so, happened before in history, so we know that. So I want to thank both of you guys. David, you want to uh, tell the audience about your newsletter and your website real quick? Sure. Just go to themorganreport.com. That's the landing page. You can give us a first name and an email, and you get the uh, free newsletter. I put out a weekly perspective every week. And most of the interviews I do, I also send directly to you, so you don't have to hunt for them. I mail probably two or three times a week to that list. And Jeff, people can get your newsletter by uh, going to goldsilver.com and yeah. putting your email address right in the field at the bottom. And we've got a, you know, it's, it's absolutely free. And then you get notices uh, uh, about any videos that Jeff or I come out with. But you also do a, a bit of stock picking uh, on your own, right? I do, yeah. So I write exclusively for goldsilver.com. All the research goes through uh, your company, Mike. Uh, when it comes to the mining stocks, we don't have a letter for that per se. Uh, you know, we turn to people like David and, and things like that. But I do do my own stock picking for the miners, um, and I do reveal what I buy and what I sell uh, on my uh, Twitter handle, which is at the Gold Advisor. Excellent. So I want to thank both of you guys for joining me. Uh, this was a really great conversation. We covered a lot of ground here. You know, I still believe that there will be uh, further deflation as velocity of currency slows. And these Keynesians, are that's going to just drive them nuts, that they can't get inflation going. And, uh, and they're going to overreact and cause a huge inflation or potential hyperinflation. But either way, as the big investors start to get scared of what's happening to the economy and what's happening to the currencies around the world, and it doesn't matter if the uh, dollar is rising, gold does not have to go down because it, it's rising against the other currencies that are being printed into oblivion. And so they're all sinking against the dollar, which they have been doing for 100 years. now. That's just where I think things are going in the future. I want to thank everybody for listening. Uh, David, Jeff, thank you so much for being here. It was fun. It was great. Thank you. We'll see you next time.